Last time, we talked about the life cycle of low mass main sequence stars, from the start of hydrogen fusion to the formation of a white dwarf. This time, we'll be talking about larger stars. High mass stars begin their lives on the main sequence. But instead of spending billions of years burning hydrogen, they burn so hot and so quickly that they leave the main sequence after only a few million years. Just like a smaller star in its late life, the core of a supergiant is fusing helium into carbon, and a shell outside the core burns hydrogen into helium. Once this shell runs out of hydrogen, it gets hot enough to cause helium fusion to begin. Then the next layer begins hydrogen fusion. This process continues throughout the star, creating onion-like layers of differently fusing elements. Nuclear fusion is no longer energy efficient once it reaches iron, so when the core builds up enough of it, there's not enough outwards radiation pressure to resist the force of gravity the star begins to collapse. As gravity compresses the core, electrons and protons are pushed together, creating a solid, rigid sphere of neutrons. As the outer layers of the star reach this solid neutron core, they bounce off and are propelled outwards with huge amounts of energy. This shockwave tears the star apart in a supernova. The explosion leaves behind the rigid neutron core. In most cases, this neutron star remains as it is, incredibly dense and spinning rapidly to conserve angular momentum. In the case of even more massive stars, however, the neutron star continues to collapse until it turns into a black hole. These gigantic stars are very rare in the universe, but they're so bright that we can see a lot of them from Earth. They're often some of the brightest stars we see at night, and when they go supernova, we'll even be able to see them during the daytime. So, next time you go out at night, make sure to marvel at these colossal giants in the sky.